Hey you guys, it's me Sarah with Craft Test Dummies and today I'm super, super excited to show you guys the brand new Ranger Ink and Tim Holtz Distress Oxide. Whoa, got it upside down. So there's a lot going on with these inks. There's a lot we've got to talk about, a lot we've got to test. So let's go ahead and we're going to get started on this review right All now. All right, so here we are with our new Distress Oxide ink pads. There are 12 colors currently available. I'm just missing the cracked pistachio. I'm sure I'll get my hands on it soon, but we're keeping our fingers crossed for more colors. These are so much fun to play with. Uh, just to show you guys real quick in difference, the regular Distress Ink, we're used to our black packaging, and with the Distress Oxides, it's this kind of cool gunmetal grayish silver color. If I go ahead and take the tops off, you can see a difference um, in how the color actually looks on the ink pad. We can kind of tell with our regular Distress that it's blue, but we definitely can see the color a lot more on uh, the Distress Oxides, and that's just because it's got the pigment mixed in with it, which we'll go into in a second. One thing to note is that Tim said at CHA that these will not be available in the minis. Um, so if you're used to the one-inch minis and really like them, unfortunately, the formula just doesn't work as good in a smaller ink pad. So we're just gonna be seeing these in the two inch ink pads for now. And one thing I wanted to show you guys real quick too again, is uh, if I put my finger down and put some Distress Ink on it, you can see it's blue, it's ink. But if I do my Distress Oxide ink, oh yeah, definitely more pigmented. Let me see if I can zoom in there just a little bit. So definitely a difference. These aren't the same thing at all. So, real quick, what is the Distress Oxide? As Tim explained it, it's a mix between a dye-based ink, which we're used to in our regular Distress, but it's also mixed with a pigment ink. And so my guess, and I could be wrong, this is just me guessing from playing with these uh, for a while now, is that it's almost like a white pigment particle, and it's mixed with our uh, dye ink. And then once we get it wet, which is that oxidation process, it seems like the dye ink kind of falls to the bottom Bottom and the white pigment comes to the top. Uh, that might not be what's happening, it's just kind of my guess, but that's kind of, yeah, what I'm guessing is happening. So, uh, with that being said, how porous your paper is, is really going to affect how these inks work. So if you're struggling at home right now and you're like, Sarah, I don't know why my tags aren't looking the same way as Tim's are in the CHA videos, we're gonna go over that just a little bit here. So Tim noted at CHA when he was doing his demos that he was not using the traditional craft tags from Ranger. He was actually using the Distress tags, which is a mixed media card stock on the Distress tags. And these seem to hold up to the new Oxide inks quite better than a traditional craft tag. And I'll show you some examples in just a minute. Also, you'll see me referencing the journal insert sheets. Again, um, you get the mixed media card stock, then you get a mixed media craft as well as a black paper. And there is a huge difference in the way these inks act on the mixed media paper as opposed to a regular craft black paper etc so just to show you really quick let me grab my samples here um so here i did the distress oxide technique which i'll show you a a fun little twist on at the very end we'll do some blending and picking up and dabbing like we saw tim do at cha but uh here I did them on regular craft tags, and this is using the mixed media distress. So you can see that the colors just pop so much more. You get it seems like you get more of the oxidized effect on the mixed media cardstock compared to a regular uh, Manila tag. Next, I wanted to show you kind of the same thing. But here we've got on our regular tag, this was on craft too, um, or regular Manila, I'm sorry. And I used regular Distress Inks, not the Oxide, the regular Distress Inks that we're used to. And I blended the colors. You can see that they blended really well. I just used three colors. I think it was like Wild Honey, Faded Jeans, and Fired Brick. And you can see that we got, you know, the green down here, the purples, and the mixing um, all over like we're normally used to with Distress. And then I put the white, uh, and then I spritzed it with water. And you can see that there's still, it lightened. We definitely got like that ghosty effect we're used to, but it's not like the oxides. And here I did the oxide on a regular Manila craft tag. 
or Manila Tag, sorry, I keep getting those two mixed up, Manila Tag, and then here again, I did it on the Distress uh, Mixed Media Cardstock Tags, and you can see it's just a lot brighter on the Mixed Media Distress Tag. Uh, just to show you too, we still get some of that really pretty mixing of the colors. Like I said, I did the same on the on all same colors on all three of the tags and tried to hit the colors in the same spots. We don't get as much of that mix and blending as we do. Oops, it looks like I have something sticky on my tag. Um, but you definitely get some blending, but not as much as with the regular distress. But how fun is that? All right, on to the black paper. So here I use the oxides. It still definitely shows this is a regular cheap black piece of paper that I have in my stash at home. Once I die cut a tag using those Dilutions journal inserts and stamped it on with the distress oxide on that, you can see a huge, huge noticeable difference uh, in how poppy and bright those colors are. So again, good thing to make sure um, you're working with different, trying out different surfaces. Again, here's a traditional craft tag from Ranger. And the colors definitely still pop. This one I got a little wet, so you can tell the colors got a little bit mottled. But um, you can definitely see they still pop, but they pop even more on those mixed media journal uh, inserts from Dilutions. So a big difference. One really cool thing that I love about the Distress Oxides that you guys are gonna be seeing a lot is how the colors layer so well together. With Distress, you don't wanna to add too much because sometimes they, it just gets muddled. If we keep adding colors on top of colors with regular Distress, it turns into a muddy brown color generally. But if you can see down here, look how bright that blue is and pigmented laying on top of the orange. I mean, we would not be able to get that with a regular Distress. So I thought that was pretty cool. Another fun technique and good thing to note is that the Distress Oxides are not permanent. They're like regular Distress. Um, no matter what, you heat set them, whatever, it's still going to react to water later down the road. So this one, I just put a little bit of ink on the edge of a, a scrap mixed media cardstock that I had. And I kept using the tiny little spritzes with the Distress Sprayer and just kept layering and layering and drying and layering and I thought that was so cool. I totally wanna do like an underwater tag now. And then um, also another thing I did was I inked this part of the tag with the Distress Oxides and then I put the stencil over it and I took a um, Distress tool, hold on, and using a clean foam, I got it wet, not too wet, but quite pretty wet. Uh, again, play around with it and rubbed in small circles going over my stencil and got kind of a cool resist effect. I thought that was fun. All right, so I wanna try out a quick technique with you guys, hold tight, and we are gonna get inky.